Hello and welcome to the Division Three Men's Soccer Selection Show. The last couple years we've had to really sweat it out to get into the tournament, being arguably the last at large bid. It's never been a sure thing that we're going to make it. This year was a little bit different than in years past. We weren't really nervous about getting a bid. Well, we, we knew we had one because we won the tournament. Being able to win that and then sit back and not have to worry about if you're going to get a bid or not for the first time in our careers was was awesome. In a matter of moments, watch parties around the country will erupt with joy as we announce the participants for the 2017 Men's Soccer Championship. The big question was whether or not we would get a bye the first round. It's a little nervous, nerve-wracking at least for me, like seeing and waiting if we're going to get that uh, first round bye as well. 42 conference champions were awarded automatic qualification to the championships. The remaining 20 spots are at-large selections. Will Tufts defend its title, or perhaps will Messiah add to its record 10 championships? It promises to be a spectacular event. So we saw the same thing as all the previous years. We met in the film room. This time guys were cracking jokes. There was a lot less tension. We will start with the first of two teams receiving a first round bye and hosting duties this weekend. North Park enters the tournament with a 7 one what? What? We saw the first bye was North Park, and at that point we kind of had our doubts about if we'd get it. And then finally our draw came out. On the other side of the bracket, as we start at the very top with the second school that has a first round five. That honor and hosting responsibility goes to Tufts. Yeah, baby! Let's go! Woo! Tufts was the number one seed for the New England Small College Athletic Conference Finals for the first time in program history. And they are the AQ out of the NESCAP. Tufts awaits the winner of St. Joseph's, Maine, and Mitchell. We also knew we were most likely going to play St. Joe's, which was the best defense other than us in the nation, and that's going to be a tough game for us. So definitely immediately after the excitement of achieving that first round bye, personally for me, the nerves starting and the paranoia started setting a little bit, just like thinking, it's like, oh boy, like this could be an upset. To get the reward for all the hard work we put in um, and the national recognition that we, we thought we deserved, uh, that was awesome. And then the preparation started. Or should I get that excellent? You need more than one? Dad, no, you just need beach? one. One is more than enough. How come his is little and mine's big? So as tradition, we always have a group of guys on our team that really go the extra mile in terms of getting ready for the NCAA tournament. Going back to our, our freshman year, uh, a bunch of the guys on the team have been getting Mohawks. Uh, this year, though, Dex and I decided for our final run, we had to spice it up, so we went with the, the blonde Mohawks. I was considering, like, if I went a little blue, and then I looked at this dude, and I was like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> we did, thankfully, have Dexter Eichhorst leading the charge on the blonde hair. So, I think after he went blonde, then we had Zinner go blonde, which is an absolute nightmare, looking like Guy Fieri. TK's worked, I felt. Dexter's worked. Um, but then you just looked at other people's and thought, Mm, this is not gonna end well. Who you thought would be leading the charge, or at least who I thought was Connor Coleman. Connor Coleman, before he won NESCAC Player of the Year, said, if I win NESCAC Player of the Year, then I'll dye my hair blonde. He won it, didn't dye it, absolute fraud. I was a fraud, I'll admit it. It, it definitely raised the team spirit when you look around the rocker room and everyone has blonde hair. I mean, it confused my grandpa who came to the game. He's 87 and absolutely no clue who was who, but <laughs> that's a different story. But <laughs> I'm definitely gonna try it out next year. I mean, it's just something fun you do. I don't really know why, but it, it just brings the team together in a way that well, some things can't. I feel like after I do, I do more. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's, it's like so bad. Yeah, it's bad. I, like I didn't know if I was going to do it or not. Um, but then I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, Kevin, are you really not going to do this with your team? <coughs> After the bid, when we got back to practice, I think everyone really knew it was business time. When we saw St. Joe's was in our pod, I think guys had some mixed feelings. Um, we knew they were going to be a really good team, so we were a little upset that we got such a tough opponent, um, despite being the one seed. 
But on the other hand, guys were kind of excited all year. It's been us versus them battling for the top defense in the country. And we felt that it would be a great matchup when we wanted to be the team that, that broke their shutout streak and cemented ourselves as the top defensive unit in the country. Sterling Weatherby was the first one to say that he really thought that we were going to get St. Joe's. And nobody believed them because we respected St. Joe's. We knew that they were a good team. We just didn't think that they were going to even be in our pod. Midway through the season, I pulled my hamstring. And the, the St. Joe's game was big for me because I always wanted to come back. Being with your team and finally being able to contribute again, as opposed to just standing on the sideline cheering, it, it's, just, it's just something else. They were undefeated. They hadn't lost. Um, they beat Bowdoin. Um, they looked good. We definitely respected St. Joe's after watching them play. They have a couple good players up top and in the middle. And their defense was awfully solid with their keeper. So we definitely knew it was going to be a game no matter no matter what. Oh, yeah! Woo! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bellow Field on the campus of Tufts University for today's second round game between the St. Joseph's College Monks and the Tufts University Jumbos. Today's officials, the referee is Jan Halaska, the first assistant is Will Hasselman, the second assistant is Kitty Siegel, and the alternate official is Gus St. Silva. Let's go, Bose. Let's go, baby. Every game from now on, literally get your god last. Because you know what? It very well might be. Family on three, one, two, three. Let's go! Let's go, I mean, that was one of the most frustrating games to ever play in. St. Joe's game was definitely frustrating. Um, they played us the way I felt teams probably should have played us all year, which was packing it in. I, I don't think we, I think the possession was literally 80-20. They only had a couple counterattacks. Um, I mean, they only had one shot on goal. We had a bunch of chances. The first half, I'd say, was probably pretty even. And then second half, once we kind of get accustomed and uh, we were able to move the ball a decent amount and really spread them out, we were able to get some quality chances on goal. On the day, I thought we played quite well. And we were generating a lot of chances. Their goalie was incredible. Credits to their goalie who made some phenomenal saves. He's like a... Six seven goalkeeper. The shots were there, but the keepers six six eight giraffe just snagged everything, and it went on and on. And the anticipation just built. They were very well organized and just super committed. Um, I have a lot of respect for the way that team played because defending like that, it gets a negative reputation, but it's not easy to do. Um, so everyone was working hard for each other, and they were they limited our chances as best they could, and we just couldn't take one. Uh, and they got to overtime, which was clearly their goal. They were pretty pumped about it when the, the final whistle blew in the regulation. Let's get it moving. Let's get at it. Let's be relentless with our tempo. Keep looking for the quick restart. It's all there to be taken. Come on, boys. Let's go. Come pick on, the game. Come on. We have to match that intensity. We have to match that at first five. That's our responsibility right now. Let's go, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, Let's go, boys. Let's go. Unfortunately, like we, we didn't finish it in re uh, regular time or in overtime despite having so many chances. It felt like I think the goalie had like 11 saves. Just wasn't falling. Missed a couple breakaways, hit the post. Goalie made another absurd save. Uh, their coach was yelling from the sideline, just weather the storm, weather the storm. Uh, they managed to do so. All credit to them. Going into PK shootouts, that was the first time we've ever experienced PK shootouts. This is our first PK game in my career. And that was definitely nerve-wracking, just being on the sidelines, hoping that my, my teammates would pull through, and I was confident in them. Coach always tells us, like, you have to earn your luck, and we definitely thought we earned the right to win that game. Going into it, I was actually not worried at all. I knew that, and this is true, just so I don't think that, or you think that I'm sounding like a total d So I was supposed to be the seventh PK taker, so as a seventh PK taker, your responsibility, I think, is to really calm people down more than get hyped to go. So I'm sitting next or standing next to Kevin Halliday in line, and my man is hyperventilating next to me. Z was standing next to me. He was like, Kevin, just seriously breathe, calm down. You're freaking me out. We've spent the last month practicing. Uh, Ferb, shout out to him. He's a psycho, and he stayed after and practiced for 30 minutes with the guys every day. Um, so we knew that our takers were going to be ready, and we knew Meath was an absolute animal. 
Lane stepped up first and set the tone, burying it right in the corner. Then Meath came up with a huge save. Kid makes an outstanding save. So we're up one nothing off the start. Then Coleman, who's been taking all of our PKs this season, had already scored two, stepped up. Honestly, beforehand I was nervous. Like it's the NCAA tournament, it's my senior year. I definitely didn't want to miss. Like I didn't want to be responsible for ending my season. Yo! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Stepped up and beat him to his side, top corner, and uh, pretty pumped after that. 2-0. I guarantee you he saves us. Nathan goes, makes an absurd save, diving down to his left and pushing away. We're up 2 now, we're rolling. <laughs> then I step up. Hit a terrible PK. Goalie gets to it, makes the save. They score. So it's 2-1 now after three rounds, a little bit more nervy. But then Travis steps up, sends the keeper the wrong way to make it 3-1. They score 3-2, then Dex goes up. <laughs> chill, 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 chill. I absolutely buried it, and all the, all the teammates, the fans ran over to the corner, it was electric. Jumbo, Jumbo's advanced to the Sweet 16. 4-2 PK shootout victory. We survive and advance. I was just thankful and I was just thankful that we made it through. Great game. Great game. Great game. Great game. Great game. Probably going to be here next weekend. We're probably got some good teams coming in. We're probably going to have some guys you guys know, possibly Hopkins or whoever this is. Like homing, is that Hopkins like homing? Or Hopkins. Like, like being lost? All right, hey, on top of that. Familiar foes, okay? Battle. All right? Let's be ready to do the work. Okay, guys, you got today, let's work Monday, Monday's off, Tuesday we'll in for a rollout. Okay? We'll get that organized. Let's make sure we continue to get better. Very proud of you. Let's keep going. We deserve to be playing. Family, boys, family! Woo! What do we got? I'm Family on three! One, two, three! Family! <laughs> 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 We thought that we deserved it, and uh, we hoped that we'd be able to move on to the next round and get things done in, in regular time. We were then scheduled to play Johns Hopkins, who was just coming off a win against Cabrini. It just happened that Cabrini pulled off the biggest upset of the tournament in the first round and upset Rowan to, to send him home. We're excited to play Hopkins. I think the, one of the coolest things about making deep tournament runs is you get to play all different types of teams. We knew going in that they were going to be a big possession team. Um, you, we can see in all their in their film uh, in the games we watched that they really are dedicated to keeping the ball. And with our defensive pressure, that plays into exactly what we're trying to do. Before we play teams, especially in this way tournament, we know a little bit more about the opponents and more times to prepare. We try and simulate how they're going to play, uh, almost like a scout team session. So we had a drill set up where one team was in their own half and wasn't allowed to basically kick the ball in the air and had to try and play out of everything. Our back four wasn't necessarily inclined to play like that. We were playing this drill where it's similarly Hopkins passing style, and we were supposed to, we couldn't kick a long ball. But Coleman and Sterling didn't take to it so well. I mean, Sterling didn't really understand the drill at first, so the first two plays basically of it, we booted long balls over the top. Sterling got a ball pretty wide open and just nuked it out of bounds into the far corner. They were great, great balls too. It was like, the guy was open. like. Sterl, that's not the job, and you missed the pass by 40 yards. Apparently we couldn't do that. We got yelled at a little bit. Right now, let's go, let's go! 33 minutes, we gotta be focused, let's go. Two, one, two, one, two, three! You're not the in the grounds to removal. If it isn't your time right now, then get off the field. There might not be much time left, so make it your time today! And we got three, one, two, three! Go, fellas! When the game started, we realized how good they actually were. They, this team kept the ball better than any team that we've played against this year. I think we gave them a little bit too much respect, uh, at, least in the, at least in the first half. They were able to possess the ball well. Um, they played um, some pretty nice combinations. They definitely took it to us the first 15 minutes of the game. Uh, they had more of the ball. They were, they were looking more threatening. So luckily, 
Uh, although we're good at pressing as a unit, our defense is even better at locking it down when we need to. Kind of grew into the game, got a little more confidence, started getting after them a little bit more, and that kind of set the tone for the second half. In the second half, we were all over them. I really thought that we were going to break through. We were getting better chance after better chance. Lane stripped their center back. He played me, uh, and I had a shot, uh, almost one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper, and in classic Kevin fashion, I managed to miss. <laughs> hit the goalkeeper actually. I missed a really good chance, put like a yard wide. And we kind of ran the game uh, for the, the rest of the game and in overtime, but unfortunately kind of like St. Joe's like didn't go our way. I started to realize that it looks like we're heading for PKs. <laughs> Last time probably gave me a little bit of confidence going into it because I was like, we have Connor Meath in goal. He's gonna stop anything. And we have five of the best PK takers in the country. You're nervous. You have faith in your teammates, of course but you're nervous because anything can happen. Go, go, go! Great stuff. What was challenging for those PKs is they had seen our PKs. They knew exactly where uh, we were going. So Lane went the same way. Go. 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 The keeper's actually there, hit off the keeper, but luckily it was just too powerful. Still went in back the net, so we were up one nothing. Their first guy scored again this time. Go. So it was 1-1. One, one. But then Coleman, once again, this time, uh, he went the opposite direction. He's gone all year. Their goalie clearly had watched the film. When I was up, I decided to go the other way. <laughs> and thankfully, the goalie jumped completely the wrong direction at my PK. Then that guy tried kind of a slow walk-up approach. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. seen guys try and practice that on Meath and it just doesn't work. He's just too athletic. He tried, Meath got down, made a great save. And once he made the first save, I, I, I just thought we were good. I was like, this is it. We got it. <laughs> Jack Delaney comes up, who came in, and absolutely buried his PK. One of the nicest PK, PKs I've seen. <laughs> buried his PK to go up 3-1. They came up again. Jared, can you scream for me? Just scream at me. Let's go, me! Let's go, me! baby! And luckily, like, we got another bounce. They hit off the crossbar and out of bound and out. So we were up with a chance to win it right there, and TBB stepped up. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Travis Ram Brewer comes in, buries one side pocket. Did that, got the victory, and uh, we are newer on to the next day against the winner of Brandeis for Strew. So everything was pretty storybook, including Travis's post-game hookup with his girlfriend. <laughs> Travis Ram Brewer, a little freshman, uh, scored the game-winning PK. And I mean, we were all excited. We all started running towards him, and we didn't really know where he was. So we were all going to celebrate, and nobody really knew where Travis was. He just scored the game-winning PK, pointed the sky, all that. And then I, we all look over, and he's just making out with his girlfriend. An intense Frenchy session. What a kid. Do you propose? Like, I, I feel that's the next logical thing. Like, TBB gets down on one knee and proposes to his girlfriend. Yeah. It's too young. Maybe that's a senior year move, TBB, you know? I'm calling it right now. I, I guess if I had a girlfriend, I can see where Travis is coming from. <laughs>